I swung by the Dollar Tree and found some really neat little dinosaur toys, as well as some Dimetrodon toys. As we all know, Dimetrodons are not dinosaurs, but I figured these would be perfect for D&D miniatures. It's always fun when you find something like this, which is pretty much perfectly in scale for D&D. As you can see, this is pretty much dead on. Now, the other toys were a little bit more cartoony. I think they're supposed to be juveniles. I'll find a use for those later on. But today, I want to focus on the Dimetrodons. These will look really nice once I touch them up. Hi. So... Uh, you always talk about touching up a miniature. But you never explain what touching up a miniature means. So, in this video, you should explain what touching up a miniature means. You know what, Kringle? You're absolutely right. So in today's video, I'm going to go through the three ways that you can easily touch up a cheap miniature. And please note, these are my low effort methods of touching up a miniature. Certainly, I would work a little bit harder if it was a nice miniature with a lot of detail. Number one, the absolute quickest and dirtiest method is to simply get some wash and brush it on. Usually, I like to use some dark brown wash and just make the miniature look a little bit more grungy. Really kind of get rid of the cartooniness of it and just dirty it up and make it look a little bit more like a D&D &D monster. Now, obviously, your mileage will vary with this technique, but frankly, if you only have a couple minutes to spare before game time, I recommend this one. Next up, you can touch up and just add paint. No priming, you just see what little details are on the miniature, and you just kind of add a little bit more. Obviously, there's no guarantee the paint's going to really stay on there very well, but I found this method to be successful, and frankly, just by painting on eyelids onto this guy, you definitely get a much different feel for the miniature. This, this definitely looks like more of an NPC than a toy. And besides durability, the only issue with this is that you have to have the paints to match the color of the miniature. In this case, the paints didn't exactly match, but it's close enough for a cheap miniature where we really just want to spend a couple minutes kind of doing a little detail work on the outside. The third method is a complete repaint. Now note, with cheap miniatures, I hardly ever try to strip the paint. I basically just clean off the model and give it a coat of polyurethane primer, usually Vallejo surface primer, sometimes Badger. Uh, I, I like the Vallejo for most of the softer plastics like this. Now, of course, because you're not stripping the paint, you might lose some detail, but again, this is a cheap miniature, so just basic stuff, base coats, dry brushing, bingo bango, you get a nice little look. I was very surprised, actually, that this guy had so much detail in his face, and it looks okay. Here are all three methods put together, and frankly, if you compare it to the original, there is a noticeable difference. I mean, this just might be me, but putting a little bit of work into this Dimetrodon and putting the fully painted one on a base, it really makes it look like it belongs on the table. Now, obviously, the paint job is not going to win me any awards, but this is a dollar store miniature. Given how many uh, excellent miniatures are out there, you really should be putting your best effort towards those. But... That should not stop you from taking inspiration from some cheap toy that you see at the dollar store. It could make a very fun little encounter. I already have an idea of what I'm going to do with this guy. And also, when I was at the Dollar Tree, I found the fabled clear epoxy for a dollar. I will definitely be testing that out for various purposes in a crafting video very soon. It's interesting how much cool stuff is showing up at dollar stores. If you've seen something really cool at a dollar store or a thrift store or something like that, please let me know in the comments below. And if you know of anything that I should be taking a look at, 
please let me know as well. And heck, I have to remind everybody, if you like videos like these, please sub to the channel, hit the stupid bell so you can see when I'm streaming and I'm uh, painting and modifying these guys on stream. You should also check out the community tab to find out when I'm running improv D&D games. It's a whole lot of fun. Remember, I can only make these videos with your support, and that support doesn't have to be something massive. Links down below, literally anything helps, and also if you have a favorite video of mine, please consider sharing it to your friends and letting people know what's going on with the Blandco channel. Oh, clever girl.